Hey, happy Friday. This week, I tested the FairBuds, which have replaceable batteries. Just look at those cute little guys. Also, Google launched their Find My network, and Intel teased their upcoming next-generation laptop CPUs. Welcome to the Friday checkout. Timestamps are down below, as always. This video was sponsored by Insta360. We're starting a brief with Apple, which according to Bloomberg is now making as much as one in every seven iPhones in India. That means that their diversification from China is actually going pretty well, and Apple is now planning 78,000 apartments for its factory workers in India alone. Wow. Next, Apple sent threat notifications to iPhone users in 92 countries on Wednesday, warning them that they may have been targeted by mercenary spyware attacks. If you got one of those messages, you're probably important enough to be targeted, which, you know, congratulations, but also maybe take a look at your phone. <laughs> And still with Apple, the company also announced that it will actually relax its repair policy to allow used genuine parts with some iPhones. That is kind of the end of parts pairing. It is a little bit infuriating that Apple is framing this as some grand green decision that they have made for the environment, when in reality they were mostly forced by law, but still this is a mostly positive thing. Then in AI news, both Meta and Google have announced new custom chips to power their various AI workloads in their data centers, joining the likes of Microsoft and Amazon, meaning that basically every tech giant with a major cloud business now uses custom chips for this. Kinda wild. And also this week, Google announced that its AI-powered image editing tools like Magic Editor and Photo Unblur that were previously exclusive to Pixel devices will now come to all Google Photos users for free. That means we can all remove creepy people from our backgrounds, like this guy. He's gone. And finally, for the brief, scientists in Antarctica asked for and received Pokestops in Pokemon Go so they can now catch Pokemon and get postcards in the world's most remote region. Pretty cute. As for our release monitor this week, the Leica Lite 3 smartphone is out, once again only in Japan, and this is the third Leica phone made by Sharp for hardcore photography enthusiasts. Next, Sennheiser launched the Momentum Sport earbuds, which offer integrated heart rate and body temperature sensors. Reviewers have said that the measurements are actually pretty accurate, and the sound quality seems pretty good too, so I guess that's cool, but for $330, they better be good. Next, Kobo announced their first color e-readers, the $220 Kobo Libra color and the $150 Kobo Clara color. I imagine that is pretty nice for fans of manga and magazines and stuff. And probably the most hilarious release this week was the Harry Potter edition Redmi Turbo 3 and the Redmi Pad Pro, where the company made the photo shoot, except instead of the London train station, they seem to have turned what I assume is a Beijing subway and also a subway stop into a magical train and the magical platform. Finally, a Harry Potter thing for the real muggles, I guess. Okay, my first story of the week is also going to be a new release, and it is these fair buds that the company sent me for testing about a week ago, and I think these might be even more interesting than their actual phones. So these are fairly normal, if not very exciting earbuds for the most part, but to get to the batteries, then all you have to do on the earbuds is to take off this silicon ring, then you have to pop open this door with a simple tool or your nails, and voila, there is your tiny cute little battery. Meanwhile, for the case, you simply take a very regular screwdriver, you unscrew the screw on the bottom, you pop off this outer shell, and then you have a little square battery ready to be removed. And better yet, you can just order replacement parts for both on the company's websites for just 10 and 12 euros respectively. So for repairability, that is great. And there's of course also all the other regular Fairphone things as well. You get a pretty unprecedented three-year warranty. The buds are made with fair and recycled materials in fair factories. They are e-waste neutral, etc. Okay, so obviously these are pretty fair. How's everything else? Well, eh, it kind of depends on how you look at it, I guess. On the one hand, these cost 149 euros, which is about mid-range, I suppose, and you get most of the specs that you'd expect at this price point. They have active noise cancelling, dual-point Bluetooth, an app on Android and iOS, where you can also play around with settings like selecting your own equalizer preferences, etc. There's even IP54 water resistance, in case you were worried about how that would be impacted by repairability, and I was surprised to hear that the active noise cancelling actually worked really well, and even significantly better than it did on the equally priced Nothing Ear 2s. Now, as somebody who's definitely not an audiophile. I actually found the sound quality on these perfectly fine, but then I actually did some side-by-side -side comparisons with the Ear 2s, and yeah, those actually sound significantly better. The Fairbuds and their case are also just really quite chunky, then the Bluetooth range is weirdly small, as I noticed them losing connection even inside my flat, and the noise cancelling doesn't handle wind very well at all. Maybe some of these can be solved by updates, but these are some real trade-offs. And 
It's a win for repairability anyway, but it's also kind of a shame that they're only available in the EU for now. Okay, and for my second story of the week, Google finally launched the bigger and better Find My Device network for Android, and there's three things to be excited for and one to be bummed about. The network rollout is starting in the US and in Canada, and just like Apple's Find My Network, it will help Android device owners team up as part of a crowdsourced network via Bluetooth to help find phones and other devices. It will go back to Android 9, so that's a lot of Android phones now in use. So on the positive side, first, we're gonna get wide support for phones, tablets, headphones a bit after the launch, and also trackers from Chipolo, Pebblebee, Motorola, Geo, Eufy, and more later. The second piece of good news is that just like with Apple, you'll actually also be able to share access to your tags with multiple people. And third, Google's Pixel 8 and 8 Pro will also get a bonus in that they can even be located when they're powered off or the battery is then using reserve power, which is a feature that is presumably also going to be rolling out to other devices later. And meanwhile, the bummer is that there's no cross-compatibility with trackers from Apple, I haven't found anything about Samsung's system, and Tile doesn't seem to be on board either, despite Google mentioning them earlier. I'm also interested to see what the privacy implications will be, but either way, you can just turn the feature off if you don't want to use it in settings, and I really hope that we get some universal standard pretty soon. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Intel showed off at least kind of teased their next generation Lunar Lake processors, and there's some interesting details. So Lunar Lake is the next major Intel chip generation for laptops coming in late 2024, and we have seen a few interesting things already. And the first thing that stood out to me is that there seems to be memory on board the chip now. Those two little tiles there seem to be a form of RAM. Apple famously has unified memory on their M series chips, which is supposed to increase speeds and reduce power consumption, but it also makes upgrades hard and it seems like Intel might be moving into that direction too. Does that mean that we're not going to be able to use regular RAM sticks inside laptops with these chips at all? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. And second, Intel said that Lunar Lake will deliver 100 plus tops of performance in AI workloads, with 45 of those tops coming from the NPU alone. For context, that is three times what the current Intel chips can do, and also about the same as what Qualcomm has claimed for their upcoming NPU, while it is also slightly higher in the total package. Intel claims that this will let them run at least elements of Microsoft Copilot locally, for example. I've still yet to find a massive use case for an AI chip in my laptop, but one device where such a chip has already come in really handy is actually over on my action cam. This is the Ace Pro from my sponsor Insta360, and I think it's purpose-built to impress tech enthusiasts like you and I. I took it with me on a trip recently where I put it through a torture test of scuba diving down to over 30 meters, among other things with it, and the results were outright fantastic. Now, filming a dive is always a huge challenge, because the deeper you go, the darker and less colorful everything looks, which is why divers often have really big rigs with huge lights like these. I just took this little guy in its dive case, put it on full auto mode, and it turned out shots that are borderline magic. Just point, shoot, and you have great footage. Of course, the camera is an absolute pleasure to use on the surface as well, and even at night, where something called pure video mode can automatically optimize night scenes with the right amount of noise reduction, clarity, and more. So what kind of magic is Insta360 using to make their quality this good? Well, to start with, there's a massive 1 over 1.3 inch image sensor that is way bigger than that of the GoPro, for example, plus it's also paired with really high quality optics co-engineered with Leica. And the camera is also smart, like actually smart with a state-of-the-art 5 nanometer AI chip that powers algorithms that analyze the footage and apply the right denoising and color enhancements real time. I've spent hours color grading underwater footage shots like these in post, and I usually can't get things to look as good as this camera gets them automatically. You have 60 meters of water resistance in the case, and 10 even without the case, and that is despite this fantastic flip-up screen. This makes filming yourself or anything else at an odd angle so much easier, and together with the magnetic quick-release mount, it turns this action camera into easily the most convenient form factor out there. I also love that you can stop and start recordings with simple hand gestures, and also that you can cancel and pause recordings to save space. And just for fun, you can even apply AI warp effects to your footage to make yourself look extra swanky in just a few taps. It is a truly unique experience, and the first 20 people who buy with my link will get an 11% discount on the product and also a free screen protector. So check them out, I hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you in the next video.